Hello everyone, hello fellow travelers. December the 10th, actually just short before it's still the 9th to be honest. <laughs> Venus is the theme of this um, video and Venus is extremely bright in the sky, you can't miss it. It's about 45 degrees above the sunset point and stands out very strongly. Venus is the evening star and this is the end phase of a 500 plus day cycle of Venus moving forward. Just about coming in between Sun and Earth, taking Earth over and for that getting into this phase where we will not be able to see it when she will be hidden in the Sun's glare. So Venus is right now here and um, this is a, a sky image from the 5th of December today, the 9th or 10th, the moon would have been, um, uh, would be over here. So the moon has traveled past these few planets. And, but we still can make out Saturn and Jupiter if we focus on Venus and just extend the line to the next brightest one and then in between you will find Saturn. So Venus up to the 19th will still appear to move forward for a little more, for just a few more degrees and then at 26 degrees and 29 minutes on the 19th of December Venus will turn retrograde. And this is a very important phase. This is if you want always when a planet is in retrograde mode it is a time of restoration of focusing onto the inner machinations of a planet's energy the more hidden sides and that's where transformations happen when things are rearranged so venus is in capricorn as we speak since November 5 and will be in that sign of Saturn of responsibility, social responsibility, social justice, very important for Venus in Capricorn, will be in that sign for four months till March 6. <clears throat> so these are really the, the darkest hours on our planet. I'm pretty sure everyone can almost see that uh, regardless on which side of the coin you are on which um, venue. It's the system has gone mad literally and this has been uh, visible on many levels. Um, I just showed you this chart last time of the moon um, the moon's no, the, uh, the, the moon's um, the dark moon, I should say, the black moon at 15 degrees um, Gemini. Here I should first show you this chart actually, that's what, what it is. When we were pushed head on onto the shadow, the last few days were definitely difficult and particularly so. Kind of, I guess. It's a time of awakening in a bigger way. This is um, just a quick review. That was that moment when the when Earth was exactly conjoined. That black moon, which is the median around which the moon's farthest position, as seen from Earth, is wavering. Is kind of, um, as, as they say, osculating in a wild motion. So this is the center axis. That moment heliocentrically gives it a wave and with Saturn here right at midheaven in a perfect T-square with Uranus and Mars, which shows um, very stressful energies, control and um, and the tyrannical energies we see around are perfectly illustrated with that in fixed signs where um, which are the most intense signs it is really that intense um, square here of 
of of conformity and pressure. So this is kind of the background what we are dealing with here, the energetic background. Intensity has been cranked up and there's no more logic. I mean, it hasn't added up since pretty much mid-March 2020 after these two weeks of social distancing when everybody who potentially would have been the carrier would have shown so and by then that should have been resolved since it's been going on and getting more and more crazy and I guess more and more people are really waking up into that that we have been played anyway to amp up all the measures even more so will speed up the awakening and I guess at this point we can say it's better it happens faster than not so for that reason we can welcome these extreme measures in a way because in the end they work for the awakening it's really God's tools are the bad guys implementing all their extreme measures we those of us who have been kind of seeing what was coming have been aware that this it would get more crazy months ago i already um, uh, did a, a meme and said the most difficult months are ahead it was clearly visible between july 2021 and January 2022 that would be the really difficult stretch and I guess as we are getting closer to the tail end of those six months things are getting really to uh, into overdrive you could say so anyway those of us all of you who have been seen this coming we are ready we are ready for that siege and we are here to hold the ground and to help other people to cope with that present difficult situation. So let's now go into Venus. Why I have picked Venus? Well, Venus, as I say, in Capricorn is um, about social justice, justice and uh, responsibility. In Capricorn, in Saturn's sign, Venus and, Sa and Capricorn is a very public sign. It is the, the sign at the 10th house cusp. If we look at the um, natural zodiac with Aries here in the, uh, at the starting point, then Capricorn is here up in midheaven, the sign of, um, of public um, attendance of, of being exposed uh, so to say um, the public arena Venus asks us to be vocal and stand up for our fellow beings and most especially for the vulnerable and the weak for women and children particularly children and, and it is stand, taking a stand for our future and you could even say most of all for the survival of our species everything is at stake we are really at an extreme juncture here and it is that last minute pretty much before the breakdown when people will wake up and that is coming it is coming really fast now it will be in those six weeks when Venus will be retrograde from the 19th of December to the 29th of January that will be six incredibly intense weeks that will be and I'm showing you how this shows so let's start a little back let me tell you a story here let's go back to October when Venus was exactly at the south node. The south node being the, our collective assets in that sense. And with the moon here, this was clearly setting the theme of care, 
of helping one another and of holding society together at the heart level of of affection, of, of the love we feel for each other, the love we feel for nature, for humanity in general. That is really the motor here of this whole transition which we are seeing. And that has been pretty much set in a, into, I would say, into a it was it was hmm, how shall I say that kind of cast in form into a shape uh, which would become a a guiding star this energy is very powerful as on that in that very same moment on that very same day we have this Mars Mercury Sun conjunction here in the center degrees of Libra, which is between 15 and 1730. That's the Aries Dwarf. So this is as all the center degrees of all signs are the most balanced in a way, as they are having the opposing signs a fractal as the overtone between 15 and 1730, the Dwarf of Aries in that sense. So this is a, even though it's a, it's a very kind and, and, um, and negotiable energy here in mid Libra with a, so th this is what this won't be a loud revolution in that sense. This will be v very um, civilized in a way. This energy, but it is outspoken and 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 taking the lead. Hmm? It's it's it is nice also as the sun here is leading. If you look at the structure of this conjunction, the Sun has passed both Mercury and um, Mars here already. The Sun is in the lead. Mercury and Mars are still to conjunct with Mars going forward and Mercury backward at that time. It also is interesting that it is at the center of that last Mercury retrograde, which as astrologers say, is the beginning of a synodic Mercury cycle tied into this structure here too, which is about the next phase of Mercury's expression, the next four months were started on this day at as well. So these are just the key um, uh, alignments. There's much more to this chart, but let's keep it at that. Now, the next one I want to show you is another mm, a few weeks later when Venus was exactly at the galactic center at 2708. These are, for all planets, very important recharge moment of receiving energies from the central sun, which is the next level up of integration, which is happening on this planet, becoming part of the greater cosmos, the galactic center, extremely important. Together with Juno, there was this conjunction at the galactic center, which lasted for days. And with the sun in midheaven here, in Greenwich at the zero meridian showing that this event has particular significance. Uranus here at the other end, so it says Sun Uranus opposition, Uranus bringing in that that electricity, that charge. This is the same chart um, no, this is uh, now. This is now the next one, right? This is when Venus entered Capricorn. Here, 
Venus, Venus zero degrees Capricorn. So that is the beginning of this four month period, as I said, from November 5 till March 6. Here, even more so, we have that pronounced Uranus opposition to the Sun shortly after new moon indicating yes it is a new beginning here if we go back one chart you see this was short before new moon when venus was at the galactic center so during new moon venus was just here at the last degrees of sagittarius together with juno that again that energy of bonding with like-minded people and with family finding our our co um activists if you want people we work want to work together and 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 build that structure for the new earth it's all coming together organically <clears throat> Also, um, one thing I want to mention here again is all, yes, it is um, the Sag energy right here, very clear, very strong. Okay, this is that same moment when Venus entered Capricorn, um, heliocentric Mars here in the 10th house cusp. Yes, uh, showing that this will be also quite feisty. We have to put our foot down in that sense to bring this change about. Just recently now, we had the sun Huya conjunction. I am showing you this is um, comment Leonard will be right here in this degree when it's closest to Earth. I'm just having this chart too. This is actually my next project. I will make a, a video about Leonard, which seems to be an extremely important ingredient in that picture, kind of a a wild card if you want like all meteor, um, uh, all um, asteroid, all comets. That's the word I'm looking for. So on that day and the 12th which is just a few days away and um, on that note I should quickly show you this is um, the sky map where you could find that comet this is for December early morning looking east before sunrise when the sky is clear these are the best days now between now and about the 12th as every day uh, the comet will be closer to the horizon, uh, closer to the sun. So if you have clear skies, you might be able to see this comet in the next two, three days. Let me just show you here. Um, this is uh, another shot of it. <clears throat> the brightest comet of the year 2021. Barely visible by bare eye right now, but... It is uh, it is def definitely the most brightest comet of that whole year, so it has special meaning. So um, right, so this is a comet Leonard at its closest. Will be it's uh, uh, it's not really marked here in this chart, but it is at sixteen degrees. Sagittarius here when it is closest to Earth, close to Huya and close to the Black Moon. So that's why this um, these two points are so specially important. And um, yeah, I should already mention this to that Moon Chiron conjunction here when Leonard is closest. Venus Pluto conjunction. So the Moon Chiron is the healing, but before the healing really can happen, 
the wound has to be opened and cleaned. And this is the difficult and, and um, painful process which comes first. And it seems this comet's energy is just another indicator in the direction where things are going. Huya again, for those of you who are new to this body, has been discovered, I guess, 20, uh, uh, in 2002 or something. It's a Plutino. And its energy helps oneself to transform fixed patterns from our past, freeing ourselves and transitioning to more flexible expressions, exactly what we are on a collective path toward. It's also a phase of going through a therapy, going through a, a kind of a cleansing of an inner review of what has been happening to us and the um, elimination of a mental virus, all these keywords by Amable, uh, one of the researchers <coughs> on about, of these um, newly found um, planets and objects. So all this fits greatly together um, like a hand in a glove. And as I said, this is the black moon when we were head on pushed into the shadow a couple days ago. And again, this is just the beginning of a phase. Now we're getting into the next few days um, heading towards that Venus Pluto, uh, that Venus retrogrades. This is Venus Pluto conjunction of the 11th. And as I said, Venus is going to station at 26 degrees 29. So just shyly ahead of Pluto. And then we'll have a second conjunction of Pluto during its retrograde motion on Christmas Day. And eventually a third one sometime in January. Venus Pluto and Maybe I should say a word about that degree um, Venus is stationing and where Venus and Pluto are both in that a part of the zodiac, which is um, actually the, this first, the conjunction here is still in hexagram 61, which is inner truth, but um, Venus will actually turn retrograde in the next hexagram in hexagram um, 60 that is here that is then um, 26 degrees 22 minutes and 30 minutes and 30 seconds again all the breakdown of the degrees you can find here on my website this is based on the human design system So the hex hexagram 60, let's quickly go there, is um, limitation. It is the idea of that a, a, a lake up high in the mountains, they can only, only contain a certain amount of water. So everything has to come in the... You see, it's 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 it. We don't want it to overflow. Everything has to be in the perfect amount and structure. Limitations are troublesome, yes, but they are effective if we live economically in normal times. We are prepared for times of want. So, in. In a short um, uh, nutshell, it's limitation which we are all feeling. We are pushed to the limits, you could say. It is interesting that in this same hexagram in the 
early degrees of Aquarius. That's where Jupiter and Saturn met in 2020. That's just about a year ago. So this whole 20 year period we are having ahead of us in a socio-economic way is a recalibration. I guess it's another way when we could use this hexagram's energy it's a recalibration, a limitation. Things have to be very structured. Also, as we easily might get overwhelmed by the amount of new information and new potentials, new ways to go, um, it can be truly overwhelming very fast. So that's another aspect of this energy of limitation. Then on the fourth night of um, Venus retrogression, the black moon is changing energy here into hexagram 45. 45 is um, let me tell you, give you the proper name of it. Just slipped my mind here for a moment. I have it all lined up here. Where is it? Here is hexagram 45 and that is gathering together the amassing, right? So the shadow is becoming amassed, gathered together. You could say uh, this is the period when things get the most intense between um, short before Christmas, so don't have too high hopes of um, having a regular Christmas this year. It might again be that we have an extreme um, severe lockdown and whatnot. And all of that kind of bringing all that shadow energy in an accumulated form out into the open interesting here in this chart is the part of fortune here together with Saturn the moon close to full and then another short while after you see less than an hour um, after 749 and the black moon moves into hexagram 45 and then 846 is when the sun exactly lines with the galactic center and I particularly like this Uranus up here now the moment when the sun our sun from earth's point of view exactly aligns with the central sun again is a moment of recharge our system is recharged on the most basic solar level with higher dimensional energies uranus here in the 10th house i guess this is pretty obvious um uh, this is um can be an enlightenment uh, a breakthrough a surprise um something definitely unexpected and beyond our imagination at this point so this is short before new moon a uh, full moon sorry short before full moon just a few hours and full moon then is on the 19th early morning in universal time and again as i pointed out this is full moon number four which has an exact alignment to the galactic center you see only less than half a min half a degree away the sun is the first one was in september 20th of september and then every month the full moons are in this 27th degree which is really unusual for eight consequent months till April 2016 which gives it away this is the window of recalibration towards a higher dimensional reality 
which is supported by the galactic truth, you could say. Hmm? It's, it's just really pulling the curtains open, evolving us out of our 3D limited perception to a much higher understanding of what this world is about. It is a fast, a fast process, a, bottom, a, bo a bottleneck, sure enough. So then, yes, then a few hours later, you see the sun here and the moon just two degrees past full moon. Now in the new sign in Cancer, this is really interesting in itself. And this links in also with um, this chart here. I guess it is this one. Um... Let me think. Nope. Yep, yeah, right here. The Venus Pluto conjunction, the first one. And just to say it once more, this was again the 27th degree. The moon was here. Always 27. Yes, that's the galactic energy here in a square aspect. The planet Mercury was here at the galactic center so there's lots of galactic center influence and now with Venus stationary retrograde starting this six week period of introspection of remodeling the whole idea of care and of love and of responsibility, social justice. It is a, will be a phase of profound navel gazing and it will lead to rewrite the universal code of care the restoration and reactivation of Venus core values which are about harmony, beauty, kindness, gentleness but also ready to defend these principles mm -hmm. that is the more Amazon-like energy of Venus, of being ready to take on arms if necessary to fight for these values. Venus is not at all just a very um, docile energy, can be quite um, fierce if necessary. And again, just to say this energy of Venus changing um, direction is emboldened by all these other alignments, the sun at the galactic center, the full moon, and then also the, um, this is the next one I want to show you. Now look at this is the degree um, of the midheaven over the zero meridian in that moment when Venus is exactly at still point and if we go to the solar eclipse we just had a couple days ago or a few days ago then this is that same degree so one could say the solar eclipse gets the energy gets fully activated with this Venus um, station which is following it by as you see 15 days interesting also that this was the new moon as solar eclipses always are and then um, the consequent full moon 
just shortly passed, so already in the release phase with that Cancer Moon of, yeah, really a very caring, very important. Last, I want to hint at Chiron, which is also on that same day um, changing directions. While Venus is reaching its ma her, her maximum degree um, in longitude after 541 days, starting th this retrograde journey, Chiron is coming out of this phase of reformatting and of restructuring its approach to get out into active mode for the next seven months. Chiron here, 8.26. Again, just a few hours after Venus had its change of direction. So this is all happening at once, one could say. Hmm? This, this is, I mean, you can see it. It's an extreme culmination of energies. And last not but not least, I want to just beam forward one more chart here. That is the start of the new year of 2022, the esoteric deep inner beginning when the sun is exactly at zero degrees Capricorn at the lowest point over the northern hemisphere and on the north, northern hemisphere as we know live about 90% of the population on this planet so the it's really the beginning of a new 365 day cycle astronomically speaking extremely important and again the moon at the 27 degree mark i mean you can't make these things up here in opposition to pluto with jupiter at midheaven i like this particularly jupiter yes is um, expansion but also swift and fast change it's the the overdrive which we are feeling and it, it is um accelerating everything also very loud and big and um so we, we can expect that what is coming is will be a key year there's no question in that i guess nobody will even want to question this it's pretty obvious it is it will be everything comes to a head in these next few months there will be enormous breakthroughs it will be extremely positive but first we have to go through the thick end and that is between now and the end of january it's really that window and then february is kind of mixed still very tumultuous by the beginning of march when venus will enter aquarius and this will happen here simultaneously with Venus and Mars um, entering the sign of Aquarius and conjuncting, having their third meeting in at, at zero degrees Aquarius. Very promising. It's kind of the birth of a new culture, of a new way of living on this planet starting next March. So there's lots going on between now and then. Venus is kind of the fractal, which shows it best at this point. And then there comes the wild card of um, Comet Leonard, and that will be the one next video I will be making. Thanks for listening and if you got out of that something of my presentation, then please um, think of sharing it or giving it a like or subscribing or whatnot. Thank you. Um, love you all. Talk to you soon.